and Major Garrett in Denver, Colorado. Good enough to join us this morning. And Major, I want to ask you then about that defense that Melania Trump mounted on behalf of her husband yesterday on uh, two different networks. What'd you make, if nothing else, of the campaign's decision to put her in front of cameras? That it's awfully late in the game to do that. If you're going to make a counter argument on behalf of Donald Trump, what you need to do within the Trump campaign is deploy your female assets as rapidly as possible. This is an awfully long time to wait to put Melania on national television. And the Trump campaign, for whatever reason, I don't know the answer, Josh, hasn't put Ivanka Trump forward to do this very same bit of defensive work on behalf of her father. Maybe she doesn't want to, maybe the campaign's not comfortable, but what we do know is of the women in the inner circle of the Trump campaign, few, and I would say none, are more persuasive than Ivanka Trump. Her voice absent from this conversation hurts Donald Trump. Adding Melania's voice helps at the margins. But when it comes to dealing with these accusations and the polling effect that we talked about in that piece, it has been, if not devastating, certainly problematic for Trump. And he needs other voices because his voice alone clearly among those women who are paying attention to this issue isn't persuasive enough. So other voices needed to be added to the mix. Melania is one. I think a lot of people are waiting to see what, if anything, Ivanka will say on behalf of her father. And as we saw in your piece, Trump is also continuing to rail against what he is calling a rigged election. He is repeatedly attacking the legitimacy of the American electoral process. Also seems a curious bit of strategy. However, he is also uh, continuing to attack members of his own party, Paul Ryan specifically. I want to give you a, just a bit of uh, an interview that aired this morning. Get your thoughts on the other side. I don't want to be knocking Paul Ryan. I think he could be more supportive to the Republican nominee. We're doing well. I think we're going to win the election. Do you think he wants you to win? Well, maybe not, because maybe he wants to run in four years, or maybe he doesn't know how to win. Maybe he just doesn't know how to win. Major, you've been following this campaign for well over a year. What exactly is the candidate doing there? Well, it's just part of this tortured relationship, always uncomfortable, never, I think, fully reconciled, even if Trump wins between Donald Trump and Paul Ryan. They are two distinctly different types of political actors. They approach politics and policy from fundamentally different orientations, not just in terms of how much Paul Ryan cares about policy and how much Donald Trump cares about celebrity and sort of the big messaging around politics. Also, Paul Ryan is not comfortable with Trump and is not going to walk in lockstep with him. Not only is he not going to walk in lockstep, lockstep, he's going to criticize Trump whenever he feels it is necessary. And he's felt it necessary many, many times. And Trump is interlacing in there, well, maybe Paul Ryan wants to be president. Maybe he's got a whole other agenda against me. What Trump knows is a lot of his supporters are deeply suspicious, if not fully hostile, to entrenched leaders in Washington. And even though Paul Ryan is a relatively new speaker, he fits that mold of entrenched Washington Republicans. So at Trump rallies, as it was happening yesterday in Wisconsin, Ryan sucks, Ryan sucks, Ryan sucks. That was the cat call directed at Paul Ryan before Donald Trump took the stage. So within that arena, the arena of Trump supporters, this message resonates. But these two are never going to get along. And look, Trump says, I'm going to win the election. If he does, Paul Ryan's going to have to figure out what to do. But if Trump doesn't, Paul Ryan will be among those Republicans and probably a very significant voice in deciding what the Republican Party becomes after the Trump effect has run its course. So you have that line of attack. You have the talk of rigged elections. You certainly have Donald Trump's attacks with regard to the various WikiLeaks dumps and perhaps Hillary Clinton's defenses of uh, said uh, against said attacks. Uh, as we then head to Las Vegas tomorrow night, what are you going to be looking for between these two? Can Donald Trump get this election back to the terrain that is most comfortable for him? that this is a change election. If you want change, you've got to go in my direction. Yes, you have misgivings about me. I understand that. But if you want someone to fundamentally, fundamentally change Washington, I'm your person. Hillary Clinton is not just flawed and has all these things that we've learned about her through the WikiLeaks email dumps, but those things tell you a story that is pure Washington. I think if Trump is going to be successful in this debate, he has to get the conversation back to that one core message, change versus status quo. And if he doesn't and just has a bunch of one-liners but doesn't connect the dots in that way that reorients the focus of what this race 
is about, from his perspective, I think it'll be a lost opportunity. I know the campaign is doing everything it can to try to get it back to that basis. Status quo versus change. Not all these other personality and character, either flaws or strengths, but just that core decision. Because as our polling shows, even though it indicates Hillary Clinton is widening her lead, there are still deep misgivings about her, and she is not viewed by any stretch of the imagination as a change agent. And if Trump can reorient the conversation about that question, he may get back in this race. It certainly seems a big ask, obviously, for a big and final opportunity here. Major Garrett in Denver for us this morning, as always. We do appreciate the time. Sure.